Okay, here we go. We're going to begin the train project. So within Onshape, I'm going to go to create a document. I'm going to call this the IED toy train. And that's going to create a new document. It takes a second to load. Okay, and down below you'll notice that you've got two tabs once that opens. One's called the Part Studio and the other is called the Assembly. And we can add other tabs for things later, but it's going to be a little while. So don't worry about that. The Part Studio is where we're going to work, where we're going to um, build all of our parts, not just the train body. This video is just going to be making the train body. I also have another window open where I can see this drawing. Um, so I'm going to be kind of toggling, scrolling up and down between this view and this view to get all the information I need. Okay. All right. So to begin, I'm going to choose a new sketch on my front plane. So I just clicked on sketch. I'm going to click on the front plane here, or I can click on it over here in the, what we've referred to as the browser before. Okay. And so a new sketch has been there. I also see this window came up that says sketch one, that it's on the front plane. And all of my other planes are still showing. And if I press P, it'll hide them. Now, if I want to look at that plane so that it's perpendicular to my line of sight or normal, you can press the N key, or I could use the view cube here, but N is the keyboard shortcut to make the current sketch you're on turn normal to your view. Okay. So, I'm going to begin with, um, there's definitely different ways to do this. Um, let's see, the front is like a rectangle if we look at it. Okay, there's like a rectangle here and then an arc. So I'm going to make this rectangle and I'm going to dimension it in here a second. So the exact dimensions that you're seeing don't matter yet. I'll click that and then I can go use the dimension tool and dimension my lengths. So the width here is 2. And the height, you got to look for that extension line that comes to that corner. Trace that extension line all the way over. There's the arrow tip touching it, 0.875. There you go. And the fact that my sketch went from blue to black tells me that it's fully constrained. And then I also have an arc. It's not a full circle, so I'm going to use this three-point arc, this one. And the arc is going to start and stop along the top, not at the corners. If you look at it right, it's somewhere along here. So there's my first point. My second point, or right, really the third, sorry, is where it ends. It's going to be on there as well. And now what I'll have to constrain is kind of the radius, the size of the arc, and I'll have to locate the center. Okay. So if I come over here, I see that the radius of the arc is 0.75. And the height of that is 1.375. All right, now it should be aligned to the middle. And I could dimension the, uh, there you go. I could dimension this, or I could use a point and use like a vertical constraint. So that's going to be halfway though. Half of two is one. And everything is black. It's fully constrained. So I'm finished with my sketch. And now I'm going to use the extrude tool. I'm going to go ahead and turn it more to an isometric. And we're going to extrude both of these regions. It is on new. I'm going to change the direction. And if we look at my drawing, I need to understand this length right here. I'm not going to go all the way. I'm just going, I mean, I could, I guess. Um, but I was going to extrude it only to right here. And then from there back, I'll do a different shape. So that exact dimension isn't given to you explicitly, but we can figure it out. So the entire length of the train is 5.5. And then this section right here is the 1.75. So we need the difference between these two numbers. And one thing I wanted you to see 
is that right here where you're going to give your dimension, you can actually type in a calculation as opposed to having to know the answer. Granted, you could figure this one out easily, but I can go ahead and put in an expression in 5.5 .5 minus 1.75, press enter, and it will solve that and extrude to the right distance. So that's kind of nice just to be aware that you can do that. Okay, now so this is going to be the front of my train body. I'm going to flip around to the back and I'm going to now extrude, create a new sketch to bring that back the rest of the length. So I'm going to choose a sketch for the back side. Okay, created the sketch plane. I'm going to press N on my keyboard. It turns it normal. And now this works different than um, on shape works different than what I'm used to in Venner. And so it's going to allow me to select this already without having done anything. So really I'm just going to add on the difference. I'm going to use my line tool and I'm going to make a vertical line. Okay. And I'm going to hit escape to turn that off and I'm going to use the vertical line again. Now instead of, let's see, yep. right here. Okay. And I do want these two endpoints to connect like in terms of being horizontal. Okay, if you see right there, those little, just down and to the right of my, where my cursor is, you see a vertical line and a horizontal line. That's telling me that those constraints are going to create it. The line will be vertical. It has to be vertical. And then the horizontal constraints that the endpoint is being constrained, you know, where the dashed yellow line is showing up. So that lets me know that that's actually constrained. Um, so you can see it actually created that constraint if I try to click and drag that. All right, so let's add for the top our three-point arc. It's going to connect these two ends, and um, and then you can see that I'm going to be able to change the size and locate where that center is. So let's go figure out um, from here what is the arc, because that is a curved top, and where's the center. And for that, it's actually in the other drawing. The radius of that arc is the 2.35. Okay, and then the height of that is 0.375. And after adding those two things, notice that everything is black. It's actually fully constrained. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude. And you'll see that even though I hadn't sketched everything, it's going to, Onshape is going to allow me to select both of those regions. To extrude it. And the distance is 1.75. There you go. Okay. From here, I'm going to add the cutout on the side. So I'm going to choose the side as the sketch plane. Again, press N for normal. And if you try to really look and understand this shape. Okay, there's actually a small region here where it's flat, and then you have a semicircle. And so I'm going to use a rectangle and a semicircle together. So the rectangle is going to be 0.25 um, in this horizontal distance. And then they'd never give you the vertical distance um, in terms of that cut out there, but they do give you the radius of the arc. Well, if the radius is a half, then it's a whole inch for the diameter, right? So my rectangle is going to be a quarter by a whole, and then I'll add a semicircle to it. Okay, so let's add this right here. Use my dimension tool. It's going to be, we said, a quarter by an inch. And then I'm going to use the three-point arc from here to here. And to make this be a semicircle, really, this point right here needs to fall on the line right there. And if I just drag and bring it onto it, you can see it's going to connect it. It's I'm holding the mouse down right now, so it's not you know, creating it and locking it in yet. But it's giving me a preview that if I were to let go right here, it's creating what's called a coincident constraint. Geometric constraints are available to you right next to the dimension constraint. There's this little drop down and you have all these different kinds of constraints that can be used. 
So coincident, and if you hover over them, you can see a little explanation of what they do, but it's going to allow me to take a geometry and make it um, kind of lock onto another geometry, so like a point to a line in this case. Now, that's a problem that flipped around on me, right? So I'm going to hit the back button, and if I use my kind of drag method, I think it's going to work for me this way. Oh, now it's not. Let me bring it to that side and see. There you go. Okay, um, it's still blue. That means that it is not fully constrained. And the thing that I haven't constrained, even though I've constrained the size, is the location. So let me come back here and see if I can find dimensions that understand like where this is. So it's 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 along the back edge, obviously, but it's the height that I haven't I haven't done anything to locate that. Well, the center of that semicircle is supposed to be 1.75 off the bottom edge. So let's use my dimensional constraint and say this distance right here is 1.75. Perfect. Everything's now black. It's fully constrained. I'm going to hit the green check. And now I'm going to use the extrude tool. And this time in the extrude menu, I'm going to choose remove instead of add. And I could type in a depth of two inches. That's the full width. I could also hit, instead of a blind distance, I could say um, just to next. And it should go kind of to that next you know, feature or side of the part. So just different ways to do that. I'm going to accept that. All right, the next one, the next feature I'm going to add is there's several holes okay there's a hole on the top there's holes on the side for the axles these are for the cow catchers and on the back there's a hole for the little magnet okay i'm gonna, the hardest one is going to be this one on top because we have to create a work plane where there's not a flat surface to choose so let's get this one out of the way all right how to make planes in general there's this menu i'm not inside the sketch right now and so um, this is a drop down where any one of these tools might currently be visible at the time. You know, it depends what tool you had used last. But inside there, there's the tool plane. Okay, and this is going to allow me to uh, create a work plane different ways. One is an offset, but there's all these other choices right here in this drop down. They don't have one that creates a plane that's tangent to a curve. Um, the way we had an inventor. So I could use the offset, choose, say, this flat surface, and then I need to go figure out what the correct distance is, right? But there's another way, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start a new sketch on this front face. And I know that I want a work plane. That hole is going to be right on the top, right? Well, there, I'm going to create a point that is on this top. Okay, so the point tool, if you find the line, rectangles, etc., there is just a point right here. And I'm actually going to create that point. It's kind of finding that vertex, the top of the circle anyway, but I'm going to make it a point in my sketch. And that's it. So now I have a sketch where I've defined a point, since there wasn't a vertex on my model, that is the very top of that. And then under plane, I'm going to choose the point and plane. Sorry, right there. Plane and point. This means um, the plane that I use, it'll be uh, parallel to it, and the point is the a point that will be on the plane. If you ever want to know how tools work, look for these little question mark buttons, these little help buttons. If you press them, It'll just open up a new website, a new browser link, and you can use this menu to understand all the different tools that they've got. So it takes you already to the plane, but you can from in right here, you know, from inside here, you can start navigating and looking at other help topics. But I'm working on a computer, so I'm going to go to the desktop version instead of um, an Android or iOS. I'm going to expand it right here. And then there's subtopics, so we're trying to use the plane and points. You can expand that. And you can read this and it explains how it works. Create a plane that passes through a point and is parallel to a plane. So, pretty cool. Um, 
so we're going to change this to plane and point and now I just have to make my selection so I'm going to select the point and then I'm going to select this plane it created that plane right there okay so now that plane will be the basis for my sketch this new sketch on that plane and to turn it normal and this time it's only going to be a point because I'm going to use a whole tool. So I'm not using a circle, I'm just going to use a point. It's going to be aligned to that. That's that's right in the middle of the feature. I just need to know uh, what is this distance back. Let's go look that up on the drawing. Okay, so this distance back is actually given right here, 0.875. And it already has it horizontally aligned. It's black so I know it's not movable I'm done so I'm gonna hit the green check I'm gonna turn this way if you want to hide that work plane I can come over here and click that little eyeball and it'll hide the plane and if I want to hide the sketch that was used just to create that one point that's sketch 4 I can do the same thing click the little eyeball and it'll hide that okay so where we found the extrude button follow all these tools over and you're going to find the whole tool right here. See what that one looks like. So I'm going to click on that. This is going to be a simple hole. Blind means we're going to just define our distance and it is actually a half inch diameter. So it's got that and it's a quarter inch depth. You'll probably have to change that. I'm guessing it's not going to come up default for what you need. And that's all we're going to do. Okay, half inch diameter quarter inch depth and just accept it. Alright, all the rest of the holes should be really easy. Um, they're going to work the same way, but um, I'm going to make sketches, lay out where the points are, you know, to define the center of the holes, and then I'll go use the hole tool. So, um, you know, at this point I might speed the video up, but I'm going to do it and you guys can hopefully follow along. Let's see, this is a diameter of a quarter inch and a depth of 0.875. They do have a menu here where I can change um, the standard from custom. I went to ANSI. It's a quarter inch. It's a tapped hole. The threads per inch was 20. That's what this is. Um, and let's see. The depth right here I'm going to define as 0.875 and they're not making a comment that the threads in this thread note that the threads don't go the full full depth so I can leave that I can just make that match the full depth um, and I think that's leaving a few threads off the end um, well just kind of let the default take place there so and I'm letting this um, it's gonna let me change that too let me nope so when I put in that size you're gonna have to let it override some of these things and just go with them so ANSI hold type tapped quarter 20 um, doesn't actually give me the visualization that it's tapped but at least in the model it knows that that's supposed to be a tap tool so I just created those I just need to do the front three for the cow catcher and then the one on the back for the magnet Okay, making this um, point on the back is actually really easy. It's finding the center of the arc. Notice the little symbol it's giving me, plus it's highlighting that. So, and that is 
where that point is supposed to be. Um, according to this drawing, okay, that hole is concentric. Uh, they gave us this arc, the leader line, kind of going all the way back to that center. So those things are concentric. So that is already black. It's fully constrained. I'm good to go there. Just going to use the hole tool, and I need the hole information, which is a quarter inch diameter and a half inch depth. So choose the point, quarter inch diameter, half inch depth. Okay. So there's the train body almost done. Um, there's a note here that says round all edges a tenth of an inch except for the drilled holes. Um, so there is a fillet tool right here and the fillet radius is going to be 0.1 and if I click on a face it actually fillets everything there. I'm going to try something though I think I remember playing around with this before so you guys can kind of see me. This is how I learn I just play around. This is really cool that if you click a face on, on shape it just fillets every little edge of that face everywhere. Now this is like the order history of how we did everything. If I drag this fill it and bring it higher, it's as if that was completed before the holes were created. And so by moving it up so that it's supposed to be executed before the holes are created, then in theory at this point those holes were not there, there were no edges to fill it and so only the other edges. So that's a way I can go backwards and get everything but those holes. Now I'm going to double click on this and we're going to add other faces to fill it at the same time. So basically we're going to choose everything. Make sure the bottom. We may have to the curves. We may just have to accept it and then kind of look. So I'm holding the right mouse button and moving my mouse just to orbit around. So kind of looking at all these little grooves and seeing if there's anything that got missed. But I think everything got filled. You know, on the back here, all these little edges, um, these curves. So if you did, if you missed something, then you can just Go back into your fillet menu, double click, and choose more. Add more to it. But there you go. So I only have one fillet command in there. Um, this little drop down here, if you choose it, you can change some different settings. Um, shade it with edges. You can um, um, change the kind of the, the view type. There's isometric. Um, you can turn perspective on, which is you know where things look smaller as they get further away. Uh, so yeah, it kind of tapers in, so that's kind of cool. Um, anyway, just don't be scared to click and start messing around, and right-click usually gives you options, and you've always got this little back button. Don't be scared of messing anything up. Just try, experiment, play around, and before you know it, you'll be a whiz.